It's imperative that we stay within the lines marked by Victor Company. To step out of them could mean stepping on an IED and losing your life. We were just getting up the top of the hill, ID. Open up on us, right we were right in the open. Cameraman's all right. Right. Yeah, that's contact. One pound seven. That was close. Well, we we think we found an ID. Yeah. Straight away we got contacted there. Yeah. So what we do, one pound seven with uh, with mortars, and then I'm going to look to find an alternate route up Let's to the high there. ground to suppress them. It's a fucking ID up there. And now we're oh, turning fire. We were, we were right in the open, you're right. <laughs> yeah, that was as close as you want to get. Tell me. The fire support group find high ground overlooking the enemy. But as the ground troops arrive, the Taliban pull a fast one. Two enemy um, not carrying weapons no they can't be engaged you've been standing on the roof um, one of the compounds in big top um, they've just called for a taxi the taxis just come and pick them up they decide not to fire today so they're now in a taxi getting into a taxi and uh, going back home for, uh, for tea um, and uh, one of the guys in the FSG just said can you believe the neck on that we remain in position for four hours Eventually, the ground troops leave, and the FSG cover their withdrawal. But as we bring up the rear, the Taliban engages. Having lost the advantage of high ground, smoke is called in to cover our distraction. There's mortars going in now, over there. It's only when they get back to base that the FSG realize how close the Taliban fire came. Just as we're going like that. Look at the top of that. That's what surrounds it. <laughs> that night, I have some of the best food I've ever tasted in a forward operating base. But we don't get much chance to enjoy it. A group of Taliban have been spotted laying IEDs and the mortar team have been scrambled to target their position. The enemy that were digging in in IED supposedly to begin with are now hiding in a bunker and they're now re-zeroing the mortars to drop the rounds on top of that, that bunker. The Marines managed to disrupt the Taliban but have no confirmed kills. We can only hope that they were spotted before they had the chance to lay any IEDs. And as the gunfire subsides, I head for bed, as we're up early again tomorrow on operations. It's just after five. I'm going to walk some three clicks, lie up on some high ground above a place called Kahalabad. The guys will get contacted from there by the enemy. Once they're contacted, they can return fire and go after their main target, which is a place called Kaji. It's a Taliban stronghold. Across the wadi from Kaji is a place called Mazdarak, and that's where three young Anglians died um, two years ago. Joining Victor Company on the operation will be the Afghan National Army with their Royal Marine mentoring team. They will take up position on Ant Hill, 
the fire support group will take position on Shrine and Essex Ridge. Push up that area and then just skirt along the edge of that high ground. In between those two? Yeah, up between the two compounds there. Okay. Yeah. Got our snipers now moving on to Ant Hill, right? He's already up there, is he? Ant Hill, that's known as. Frustratingly slow, isn't it? Yeah, mate. Safe and sorry, I suppose. You can see how exposed it is then, mate. Yeah. We've only got 11 minutes of the B1. So you get up on top of that. They've got a B1 bomber standing by. They've only got 11 minutes to use it. So the guys have to get up there. And uh, there over there is a, a town. They call it KG. It's an enemy stronghold, so they can get attacked now. And in a way, that's what they want. They want the enemy to engage them so they can actually engage back and then use all the assets, particularly this, uh, this bomber that's up in the sky. But as they said, it's only got a short window where they can use it because it'd be a task somewhere else. Anyway, we should catch up with them. Again, Taliban know the soldiers come up here and use this high ground, so they definitely ID it. The Marines have cleared and marked a narrow track for us to follow. To step out of it could be fatal. 80% of all casualties are victims of IEDs. Right, we've made it to the top of uh, Pyramid Hill, as you can tell by my breath. Uh, that was a little bit of a steep climb. Now I have a high view of Kalabad and of Kaji, which is ultimately the target of today's operation. Uh, but it's quite high up here, and as you can tell, uh, he's just catching up with me. Fantastic views over the surrounding countryside. We've got the ANA just over to our right. Just further north of their position is actually uh, Mazdarak, which... Oh! Anyone know what that was? Contact ID, up Hill. ID. And so over there... The smell of the cordite and the fumes just hitting us now. As far... We've got shots coming in. Over to... Shots going in. There's a GPMG firing in. <laughs> 900 metres away on Essex Ridge, the FSG engaged the enemy. Where is it? Down here. Anyone hurt? Yeah, we've got one at the moment, which we're just dealing with. But Kazavak is on its way. Helicopter that will take him to a hospital as quickly as possible. Now, as you can tell, this has upset the lads, rightly so. so they give it all they've got now to make sure they get their own back, I would imagine. Well, oh, bang on. Five kilometres away at the base at Kajaki, the mortar team are tasked to engage the enemy. Fire! The rounds are going in to Kalabad uh, now. They know there's an uh, enemy there. The medics take the casualty to a makeshift landing zone. strike from air line. You're going to bring in uh, air onto that target now. Fast air's on its way. It's dropping something big. Don't know how much. But um, it's 30 seconds away, so we're going in <laughs> 30 seconds. You can hear it above us now, actually. There he goes. Whoa, it's OK! Tell me. Two, one went in, incoming straight over us. So, uh, you know... 
You may have dropped 2,000 pounds over there, but there's still soldiers willing to take, uh, take us on uh, that way. I'm not exactly want to get my head up again right now, do you? Yeah, I so. Oops, reckon that's a sniper round, mate. Single shot, yeah. I think it was a sniper round because it was a single round and it had a lot of velocity behind it. You'd think that there would be more rounds coming in if it had been uh, a PKM, but you know, I'm a civilian, what do I know? How much ordnance was that? Uh, three £2,000 on it. That was a lot of ordnance that was just dropped then, that was three £2,000 bombs. A lot of bombs just dropped and a lot of money was just dropped. But uh, yeah, that woke me up. Unknown to us. There are more missiles on the way. But this time from the guided mobile launch rocket system at Fob Edinburgh. The operation to destroy the Taliban stronghold has been a success. Our thoughts now turn to the one casualty of this operation. Dave's just told uh, the troop to be really aware because the, Mer the medical emergency response team uh, are on their way in by Chinook. Now, the problem is, of course, that Chinook is a fantastic target for the Taliban, so the guys have to be really, really aware that if any fire starts getting pushed in the direction of the helicopter, they sus suppress it immediately, otherwise, um, you know, it could be a, it's a potential disaster. Yeah, just drop down to the rear sections, like... No smoke, no, just go. No, just, we're just going now. All right, right we're off. Good. Got down there without being, uh, being taken on, but I know that the Apache above us would have uh, dissuaded a lot of guys from putting that down. The Mert arrived to pick up the casualty and take him back to the hospital and Camp Bastion. As a casualty leaves the battlefield, it's a sobering reminder to all of us to keep between the lines. At the base of Pyramid Hill, we meet up with Corporal Matthew Darcy. Uh, mate, any news on the cash? Yeah, he's, he's gone. Yeah, he died before he got back. <sighs> Just, uh jumped down, like, yeah, that's as far as we know, Catty, so that's, yeah, that's where the moat was. Yeah, come in 35 minutes, it was good as good as gold, like, the, yeah, and he'd lost um, below, the, or just above the knee, I think it was, and lost an arm, so I think just massive trauma. But uh, we'll get you down out of here, get you into cover, then okay, uh, we'll mate. find out more when we get back. Well, that's shocking news. Unfortunately, a soldier's yeah. just lost his life. <laughs> 